And this is a huge, 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 a massive anomaly. Wonderful. Michio Kaku, another system guy. Michio Kaku, they got it. Saying that if during the perihelion, the closest approach to the Earth of 3i Atlas, if it changed velocity, it will mean it's intelligent. It means that there's energy boost coming from whipping around the sun, and that requires intelligence. I heard that, I watched that, you watched that hundreds of times. It's intelligent. Then it increased the speed. And after that, he was saying to this reporter that it was only to a slight degree. Bam. That's kind of concerning. I mean, you, the, the quote was that that intelligence would be there if it sped up around the sun. No. And it did. To a slight degree, right. Then he said that, oh, it's something that comes from a long way, from a far away star system. What star system? They don't know, man. They don't know the size of it. They don't know what is it. They don't know the star system. They pretend that they know everything and they don't know anything. It's crazy, man. They are not humble enough to say, okay, we are studying it. We don't know yet. We can't say it's a comet because it doesn't behave like a comet and it has many anomalies. But we are studying it. We are NASA, we are ESA, we are China, we are whatever. All of them. All of them. The acceleration, it's all about that. That acceleration and that shift on direction. Remember I asked Eviloe when he was here. I asked Eviloe, Eviloe, does that shift on direction mean that it will go to Jupiter directly? And he said, not really, because it was slightly shift. It, it didn't shift so much that he, he could uh, go to Jupiter. And we forgot that. But now he watched someone making those calculations and he made the calculations as well. Because something very, very weird, a coincidence, another one, very weird happened. You know that on Earth and on planets, there, there's gravity around, right? There's gravity. It pulls everything, the gravity. But there's a like a, a bulb around, a sphere, that from there, it will not pull. It will be influenced mainly by the gravity of the sun or whatever massive object is nearby. We have that on Earth. The moon is around the Earth. It's the gravity of the Earth, it's in a perfect position, another weird coincidence, in the right place to have that movement around the Earth. For instance, James Webb. James Webb is in a position that, in a threshold of that sphere, so he, he's in a place that he will not be pulled by Earth's gravity, neither by the Sun's gravity. It's in an equilibrium place, the Lagrange point they call behind us because of the sun so he can watch the sky without being messed by the sun the lagrange point two is james webb the lagrange point one is where there are different probes from the earth like soho that we use here to watch the sun they are always there so they can be always in that same position without moving away from there you see the lagrange points here is james webb lagrange point number two the number one has the solar probes and more stuff. They are in a circle always. Bam, 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 bam. And they get stuck there. Because there's an equilibrium in forces. There's the Lagrange point. Four, five and three as well. So this is the place where they can be in equilibrium. And what happens with Jupiter? Jupiter is big. And Jupiter has loads of stuff around because it's big. There are loads of asteroids and stuff around Jupiter. In that zone, they are stuck there. So, if they get closer to Jupiter, they will be sucked by Jupiter. If they get far away from that region, they will get out of uh, Jupiter zone. And they will fly towards other forces, other massive objects. That's why when people talk about Nibiru, it's because... It can be that a planet X or whatever is 
and probably is in the Oort cloud that is one light year away from us. It's uh, the bubble that surrounds our own solar system. It's because of the gravity of the sun. It's still there with loads of stuff. It's the boundaries. It's the real boundaries of our solar system. It's not Pluto. It's the Oort cloud far away, much far away. And probably there is a planet there, or more, or whatever it is, a mothership or whatever, who knows, nobody knows, that with its gravity changes the direction of those objects. That's why they come, many of them, from the Earth cloud directly to the Earth. They lose that equilibrium. This is Jupiter, and this is Tria Atlas in its cl closest approach on the 16th of March. It will be the closest point. Now, three Atlas, Jupiter has a, a bubble here as well. Has a bubble of uh, influence with that gravity. And why is that important? What happened? Because with that change of direction, three Atlas is like fine-tuned and corrected the path to pass exactly on the shape of that bubble. On that threshold and it's a special place to be neither in neither out exactly on that region why is it special because it's the perfect place to send probes if you want to send probes because it will not require thrusters as if it was for instance imagine that it was crossing inside that zone it will be pulled by the gravity of Jupiter, three Atlas with its, its strength and velocity won't be pulled by Jupiter, but any probe would have to use a lot of speed and, and thrusters to get into a Lagrange point in Jupiter. So if it's alien and if it wants to send probes to stay there to check and gather information to the source, to three Atlas, will be the perfect position to do that. So it's super weird coincidence and it turns it more alien than ever. So the thing is, it's not that three Atlas will be sucked or far away, nothing. Three Atlas passed through the sun like a, a champion, like a champion. You know that, right? It didn't break, nothing. They were telling, no, nothing. And it will cross Jupiter as well, even that it was closer to Jupiter, inside that sphere, it will not be pulled by gravity. At least in the previous path it had. If it was further away, it will do its way as well. But now, it has an important place that was corrected and by coincidence, it's in the right place to release probes and they will not have to spend as much energy as if they were inside the bubble or outside the bubble. The bubble of gravity that sucks everything to Jupiter. To me, it's a massive anomaly. If you connect the dots and the first anomaly that we got that at least me and many others got in shock and thought immediately, this should be something probably alien. It was that coincidence, another one, coincidence to get the path first to be a massive object that wasn't supposed to be there we were supposed to receive smaller objects not a big one immediately and then right on the path uh, right on the ecliptic plane on this horizontal path that you see it was not coming from up down or down upwards no 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 it was right on this plane that makes a re really weird coincidence. Really, really weird coincidence. The chances of this to happen 0.005%. And by coincidence, near Venus, Mars and Jupiter. And by coincidence, adjusted the path to get in the precise moment on Jupiter to check that planet. Why Jupiter, not the Earth, Tiago? Maybe because Oumuamua did it first. Because... You forget that Oumuamua was something also very weird, most likely alien. They didn't explain anything of that and lack of tail, the shapes, cigar shapes, the movement away from the sun without any, any jets 
nothing. Super weird. They call it Invisible Tail. Yeah, bite that. Invisible Tail. Super weird coincidence. And Oumuamua passed very, very close to the Earth. We didn't see it. In 2017, we didn't see it. Until it was gone. Then we saw it. Hey, look at that object. It crossed the Earth. We didn't see it. Look at that object. It looks like a cigar. Look at that object. It doesn't look like a comet. It has no tail. It's very weird. Look, we can see here that it moved away from the sun. Super weird. Look, it had no jets to move away from the sun. The natural jets that are caused by ice sublimation. Ice and gas. In the natural comets, it was nothing but, a, but something probably very, very alien. But they insisted in inventing a name of it. It's the dark comet that has an invisible tail. You just can't see it. It's invisible. And they are trying to do this. And they will do this again with three atoms. They are doing it already. With that freaking NASA stuff. Cringe presentation. To present crappy pictures of, of what they say it's a comet. You need all that those resources and time and people to present a dot mm, 